dive into summer learning. For those of you who are um, going into summer school um, or you just want content for your students, some additional things that your students can work on um, over the summer, when you log in to BrainPop with your account, then you'll see this banner here talking about dive, diving um, into summer learning. And it's broken out into grade levels where you can look at suggested content for your students. So you have this at your fingertips. What a great resource that you can use um, uh, for the summer, getting your students ready for the school year. Okay. So I'm gonna go back here. Um, I know most of you who said that you are familiar with uh, Brain Pop, probably most of you have used um, just the movie and the quiz. Maybe some of you have done more. So I wanna dive in and show you a little bit more of some of the things that you can use, um, some of the other tools besides a movie and a quiz in Brain Pop. And so if I am searching for a particular theme or topic, and I'm going with the American Revolution, you know, I've just been on that right now. Um, a couple of things I wanna show you, as you can see the Texas Revolution, American Revolution, I'm just gonna click on this first tile here. And when that finishes thinking and it opens up, you're going to see those tools that you have access to. Now, here's another disclaimer. You won't have access to all of this if you are using your generic accounts. You have to get your individual accounts for like the coding to open. I think um, the challenge as well. So you want to definitely uh, change over. So we're gonna pretend we're building a lesson here, right? So I want you to put on your hats of, I'm building a lesson on the American Revolution for my students. Okay, um, they, I've introduced the topic, they've already seen the movie, they've taken the quiz, but I want them to go a little further. I just don't want to stop there and say, okay, guys, that's it on the American Revolution. There are so many activities uh, more that my students can do, that your students can do, starting with a challenge. These are so much fun. They're gamified um, a little. Um, or lots, depending on uh, which topic it is. But the challenge allows you, again, to give the students that opportunity to go deeper and wider when we're building a lesson um, on the American Revolution. So right here, you have a graded lesson and you have a review. So if the students need to review, here are some keywords here on the left-hand side that now your students can use to fill in the blanks to complete the sentences below, okay? And so, and then it will allow them to check their answer and then they can go back and make those changes. So you just click and drag. Okay, and so while I'm doing this, I wanna pose a question. Why would I need to um, have my students do this challenge? Why? Anybody like to be the first one to speak up? Well, I'm assuming, oh, go ahead. All right. Harvard, I guess it's, you know, makes sense for just kind of like a check, check for understanding, uh, make sure that they, you know, stay engaged. Yeah. Just to name two. That's good. Yeah. So true. Anyone else? Laura, I think you were going to say something. I was going to uh, say pretty much what he, what he said that um, since the the little button that you clicked on said review. I was assuming that this is reviewing literally what they, would you do this before the video or after the video? You can, you can, you can do this before the video. Um, there, there have been times when I've gone in and um, conducted a training or a lesson with um, in the classroom 
And I would introduce the topic or the concept initially, and then I would assign one of the other tools and I'm gonna show you the related reading. And then, then at the very end, I would sign the movie. So you have that flexibility um, with our topic. So I think that's great to call out. Yes. Can certainly do that. Um, while we're here, also, you see where it tells you, tells us, to, it shows me the ones that I've gotten wrong, try again, save and keep going. So that way your students can continue to work and figure out the right and wrong, you know, get the right answers and um, continue to review. Over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to show you what's brand new to Brain Pop as well, Immersive Reader. You've been asking for this, and so now it is here. You have Immersive Reader where you can now um, allow this to be read to your students. If you need something in a different language, we have that as well in Immersive Reader, and it will um, help those students that may have that language barrier or um, the reading uh, barrier as well. And it will read it for the students. Fill in the blanks to complete the sentences. Okay. After initial losses at underscore, and I the can, immediate gathering of underscore. And I can pause that as well. So immersive reader is just awesome. And as you mentioned, Tendula, that, that one of the huge very powerful aspect of it is that it the variety of languages that it has that it can translate on the fly where you're not having to do any additional work exactly. or the students is like on the fly all you do is you teach your students how to manage it and, and yep. decide because oftentimes i'm telling you that there were a number of classrooms that uh, i was at you know during the school year in which there was a variety there were some that were even um uh from Turkey, I believe, uh -huh. uh, and from Pakistan, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Spanish speakers. So you had within the same classroom, you had three or four different, uh, you know, target languages that the students uh, in activities that had or included their merchant reader were able to utilize and take advantage of it. Very powerful. I so agree. That is so true. And I live in Dallas. And so in, um, I think it was Frisco, they, they wanted Farsi and they use the immersive reader and no problem. So yes, this is a game changer. I mean, it, it really um, brings that um, equity, if you will, to, our, to all of our students. So um, to help them feel successful, because that's we're in the business of making everyone feel successful, especially our students. We are setting them up for success. So Immersive Reader is new this year. You will see that, of course, next year, and it will not go away. It's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna go back here. So that was the challenge. Don't be afraid to use the challenge. I am going to go back for just a quick second, though, and show you then the graded portion here. So the review, and now you have the graded portion as well. Um, and they can, now they can, if you have those individual accounts, now you can see that grade and be able to track their progress. All right. So I'm still thinking of building a lesson. I want to make my lesson rich. I want my students to go deeper and wider. There's also a, a make a map. Um, has anyone here on the call used a make a map before? Good, good. If not, I challenge you to use it <laughs> um, for this upcoming school year. It is a wonderful tool. It again, checks for understanding. It allows for great conversation um, with peer to peer. Uh, you can do this whole group instruction as well. And so I'm gonna click on make a map. You didn't hear from me, but this is my favorite. It really is. Um, you can have your students create a brand new one or you can create a template and then assign that to your students for them to work on 
um, to, to continue to complete it, to build on what you've started. And so um, I don't have one created, but I just wanna show you if I click on create new, I'm just gonna click start here. I need to give, give this map a title. Um, if I wanna name an American Revolution, I can, uh, or I can name it whatever I like, click create. If you notice in, on the left-hand side, the actual movie itself populates. So now my students again can use that as a reference. As they're building this concept map, now they can go back, reference um, anything from the movie, and they can start building and using even the icons from the movie um, into their make a map. So here on the left-hand side, as I just mentioned, you have the movie, I can play it, and then also you'll notice that there's a little camera here. And I may want to capture an image from the movie. And to do that, all I need to do is click on the camera and it will capture that image for me. And so now, as you can see, here's Tim. I can now, I can, at text, excuse me, to Tim. Um, also over here, if I want some additional images, I can click on images here. And then I can begin to, again, click on an image and then it's gonna automatically populate here. Right into my design board. So I'm bringing in images. I may just tell my students to create. Whatever you know, all that you know about the American Revolution. Right now, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm, I just want them to create. Even though sometimes it's funny that our students struggle with that at times when we just give them a blank canvas, but that's okay. We can, we can still um, encourage them, don't be afraid. Just, what do you know? And the movie is there to help them go back to, um, to review if they need it to. Okay. So I pulled in some images here. Also, here on the left-hand side, there are some keywords. This is important. I can do a lesson just on keywords all by itself. I don't have to do anything else, which is very rich because a lot of times our students don't know those keywords, the vocabulary. What a great way um, to make sure our students are um, up to speed with our keywords, okay? So I'm just pulling things in as I see fit, as I want to. I don't, I'm just creating. And if I want- On their famous midnight ride, ah. Paul Revere, William Dawes, and Samuel Prescott warned leaders that the British were on the march. Well, on April 19th, 1775, a colonial militia met the- so I can now, these arrows here, the play buttons, gives us a little, gives the students a little information about each of these keywords. I, I, I love make a map. <laughs> I love it. Um, so now I can connect images here by bringing in the arrows. And if you hear noise in the background, that's the lawn guy, I apologize. <laughs> so I can pull all of these over, okay? If I like, if I want to, I can, again, put text here, do so many things, I can change colors, I can, add backgrounds, there's just so much to do. And I know we're gonna be pressed for time, so I'm gonna keep moving, but this is um, pretty much how you can um, do make a map. Students can save it. Um, also, like I mentioned before, it says assign here, that's for you. If you created that template, then you can assign it to your students. Students can work together on this, as I mentioned before, that is totally up to you. Um, one of the things 
additional that's that's new. Well, let me save this first. Are there any questions on make a map? I was just wondering, is this one of the things that you said that we would not have access to unless we had our own account? You you should have you okay. will have, still have access, yes, to um to make a map, even if you have the generic accounts, I think. Okay. Because I'm assuming a generic account is like what I use in district is I just go through the class link. Yes. So it depend depending on if you go through class link clever or something like that. Um it's you know, if you have no, if you're using class link or clever you should have your um individual accounts if you're being pulled from a roster you should be able to do that from okay. there yeah because i do get into class link with my own credentials okay so okay. awesome and do you have access to all of all of the tiles are in bold that's what i'm looking at right now and it looks like i do have make a map i just okay. have not used it before <laughs> okay Awesome. Well, today is the day. Today is the day, Laura. <laughs> thank you. Today is the day. No, thank you for your question. Any others on Make a Map? All right. So it's saving. It's It will tell me that I saved it. And we are going to move on. Go back. The one thing, let's see if it's gonna show for me. Yep, all right. The other thing that's new in addition to immersive reader, um, on the movies, you have the pause points, another game changer. Pause points are here to stay. We are happy to announce um, our pause points, which allows our students to uh, review the movie, watch the movie to a certain extent, and then it will push out some questions for your students to answer. So again, we're building this lesson and we're checking for understanding as our students are moving along through the movie. So let me show you quickly how what that looks like. I'm just gonna let it run to the first uh, pause point. Um, and then you'll see some questions on the right-hand side. They'll pop up for your students to answer. Eight and 34? Are you sure? I don't know if everybody can see my screen. All right. Dear Tim and Moby, what was the American Revolution like? From Liam. The American Revolution was a long and bitter war. The colonists were way outmatched. Instead of a real army, all they had were local militias, volunteer forces where soldiers could come and go as they pleased. And they were up against the British, the most powerful military in the world. Okay, so that's their first pause point. And it then asked the students a specific question. What do you think the word revolution means in this movie? And I can pick one. And it tells me, nope, try again. World. Okay, and the then it will continue to move on. Came to destroy a stockpile of weapons and I'm going to pause that. So that's the other thing um, that's new as well. Um, most of the movies have pause points now, but we do have some that are haven't been completed yet. But don't worry, they're still the, our product team informed us that they're still working on them, trying to get all of the brain pop movies with pause points. Um, you can also turn your pause points off um, at different times if you don't want them. Um, as well. So you have that flexibility to do that. Jill, I have a question regarding plus points. Are, are, are the students able to skip through them uh, if they're turned on? Uh, like, let's say no. that it comes up, you know, pops up on them, kind of, kind of go, mm, I don't like this question, or I don't want to answer, or, I don't know the answer. So let me just pretend that I wasn't even there and continue right. to be able to do that? No, from what I understand on the student side, you are not, they cannot move ahead. They have to go in order. Good. 
Yep, good question. All right, so if I wanna go back and look at the, the bigger scope or I can just scroll down a little bit um, and I think I'll just do that because we looked at make a map, we looked at a challenge. Um, we are now gonna look at make a movie. Um, another way, another tool that we can utilize here as well. You can now ask your students to create a movie on the American Revolution. So again, I'm continuing to build. I can create or have my students create their own um, letter, um, or they can answer one that's already done. They can pick one. You start your movie with a letter. Can you tell me about Benjamin Franklin's role in the American Revolution? I'm gonna choose this letter today. And again, that's gonna show up here in my edit um, area. And you can create transitions. You can add backgrounds. If you wanna change the color to your background, you can do that. I'm so in love with these transitions. The students you know, get a big kick out of it because they feel like, oh, I'm actually creating something, um, a movie. They can add sound, okay? If I come back here and click build, here are those images again. I can pull in an image. Okay, I can go on to the next one and add another image. Move to the front, move to the back. You can delete it if you, nah, I'm like, nah, I don't want that one. I want this one. Again, I can add background. I love orange. Okay, I can even draw. can change the colors, you can click undo. And so I think you get the idea of where you can, what you can do with make a movie. You can add up to 20 scenes. So I'm gonna go back to build again and pull in additional images. I, um, I'm gonna pull in George Washington here. Again, I can change my transitions. I wanna show you how you can add sound. You can use a computer voice or you can record your own voice. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to the training today on BrainPop. Click stop, it's processing. And then I can click the play button to hear it back, to play back if I want to. Um, and I'll do that in just a second. And I'm going to add one more scene here. I'm gonna click save. I don't even have to click save if I don't want to. I think I'll just preview it. I'm gonna click the preview button and then it's gonna start out with that letter. I can use the sound to read that letter. I can create my own sound to read the letter myself if I wanted to has my transitions, the colors there. So it's super user-friendly, super easy and quick for your students to do. I'm not sure why my sound didn't work. Well, that's okay. Let's see here. I want to add sound. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Students will play with this all day. <laughs> so this is another way that you can build a better lesson 
by doing, um, creating a movie called Make a Movie. Any questions so far? I will say this, don't be afraid to use the other tools, okay? Don't be afraid, it's okay. Another one that I wanted to show you, we have creative, oh, what's going on there? We also have creative coding. For the sake of time, I won't go into that, but I also wanted to show you related reading and how that um, can be used to introduce the topic as well. Or again, you're always checking, checking for understanding and building your background knowledge for your, you know, for your students to build their own background um, knowledge. Again, you see that immersive reader there. We can uh, read this together as a class. I'm building this background by using this related reading. Okay, it just gives us some detailed information about the famous faces during the American Revolution. Or click on the politics part of it and the same thing. What a great way I can assign this to my students and really set the stage for what's to come, giving them that background knowledge. Or I can say, okay, guys, I want you to read your related reading and create a make, uh, make a movie or make a map from that related reading. So how are we going to go above and beyond a movie and a quiz um, come next school year? Okay, as I'm scrolling back here, I'm just gonna scroll back down. Also, there are worksheets that you can print off. I apologize for my screen keeps jumping like that. I'm not sure why. Um, I, I will show you this. And then you also saw the tile for the vocabulary. Okay. Here is a cool worksheet. It says match each battle location from the word bank to the numbered location on the map. Then briefly describe the circumstances of the battle, its outcome and its significance. So now my students can, I'm just gonna put in Swedish here. As educators, we know what that, what all of this means, this Swedish, right? I can show the answer key. I can print this out for my students if I wanted to, or I can assign this worksheet as well. And here's that word bank. We can use, the sky's the limit here. Okay. Any questions on the tools, other tools that you can use besides the movie and a quiz? Any questions, any comments, any concerns? I had a question about saving. Mm -hmm. So when you save it, does it, um, sort of leave a note or a little number or something to you to remind you that you did say something? That is a perfect question. I'm so glad you brought it up because I was about to forget to show you your dashboard. So with those individual accounts, you have a teacher dashboard and it will notify you. You will see what you need to grade after a student completes something. Um, you will see that in your dashboard. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Um, custom alignments are coming um, for the state. Um, your district um, can even go further by getting your district alignment. Um, and we hope that we can do that. But for the time being, these are just placeholders. These are for Georgia, definitely not for Texas, but come the fall, you will see your state um, alignments here with um, star readiness, um, essential skills. So when you have those individual accounts, 
you'll see all, if you're being, if it's being rostered, if your account is being rostered, you will then see all, all of the And so basically you would see all of your classes listed here and then, and, and the students, and all you would need to do is assign curriculum, topics, lessons, challenges, related reading to those, um, to those specific classes. Okay. And so that's where you would be able to see your dashboard. You can follow along, monitor your classes. This is where you will be able to track your students' progress. So as you can see, some of the projects that I have done already is being saved here. And I have two fake classes um, here. And I click on the class. Of course, I don't have any students. Um, but again, you would see your students listed there. Um, also, they can um, see their assignments. Once you add those assignments here, your students will be able to um, access that. So there are lots of perks to having your, um, your individual accounts, lots of perks. So I'm so glad you brought that question. Thank you. The other thing before we go, I wanna show you, you also have access to the Brain Pop one-on-one. -on -one. Um, this is again for you, the educator. If you feel like oh, I'm a little rusty with my Brain Pop knowledge, you can certainly click on that, sharpen up your skills to get ready for the new year. Um, so you have access to that. You don't have to do it in a set time, you can save it and space it out over time, if you will. I'm gonna go back. because so I wanna show you that you have access to professional development. Um, we need more CBE uh, instructors. Those That stands for Certified Brain Pop Educator. And so here, when I clicked on certified, what did I call? Yeah, certified. Um, then you can scroll down here, and we have a summer cohort coming to you in July, and so you can register for that right here by clicking on that button, and then it will allow you to sign up. It is July 11th. Um, the nice thing about being a CBE is that some, you get lots of swag, more swag than I have. Um, we're always sending things. Our company's always sending things to our CBEs. Um, also, you may get the opportunity to do some training. We already know Texas is huge. So I may be calling on some of you to, to come in and uh, work alongside of me to do some trainings um, at other districts if I can't be there. Um, so, and we also like to, you know, take you guys out and have fun. So if you're interested in being um, a certified brain pop educator, please, 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 I urge you to sign up. Lots of fun, lots of perks, getting to meet different people, new people, different, front, you know, all your colleagues. Come in, I'm, I'm in there already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in there. Oh, good. Yes, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you would also help out in that respect. Yes, because yeah, if you know someone is interested, if you're yeah. interested, please. I put my um, email information in the chat, so all of you can contact me. Um, do we have any questions before we go? I know we got a couple of minutes, like two minutes left. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so in order for the kids to to do uh, an activity in there and they log in with their individual account, does it have to be assigned to them or could, like I work in the library, I'm a librarian. So I yes. can't imagine that I'm gonna be assigning everything that I want them to do when they come to me because I have the whole school. So right. is it something I could just tell them, uh, log in and get on this assignment? Do you, this? That is an excellent question. You can do that. Um, you're right. As a librarian, you probably won't have your classes rostered like that. So what we also have is a co-teacher um, 
not, um, what word am I looking for? You can be a co-teacher. So those students that are coming to you, mm -hmm. some of um, your, your classroom teachers can make you a co-teacher and that way you can have access to that class and assign your own curriculum. Or okay. you can tell your class, you know, your classroom, that homeroom teacher to assign a specific um, content as well. But we have the co-teacher rights where you can do that. And I'll be happy to show you that. Send me an email and I can um, show you where that is. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. An alternative uh, to that that works as well uh, is basically you can have uh, a particular link basically that you grab from when you're at that topic or at that make a map, uh, mm -hmm. related reading, there's always that link. And um, you could put that link on a page on the LMS, like for example, in our district with Canvas, you could you know, embed it in there and say, today you're, you're accessing you know, this particular page and in there you're gonna have the link to this and it's gonna get you there. Yep, that is yes. true. That, that is another way. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you can take the if, link. If I do it that way with the link, they still need to sign in to get to it, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. No problem.